What's up everybody, if you that don't know me, my name is Chris, aka Mr. Grow It, and today I got a topic video for you. By far one of the most common questions I get here in 2021 is, what should my light distance be when using the dimmer on my grow light? Now the answer to this can be a little tricky since not all grow lights are created equal. If you dim down to a certain percentage on one fixture, you're not gonna get the same power output as dimming down to that same percentage on another fixture. But there is a few things that you can do in order to make an educated guess on what the light distance should be when using the dimmer at different levels. And that's what I'm gonna get into today. But before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor of today's video, Mars Hydro. Thanks to Mars Hydro for sponsoring this video. Check out their multi-chamber tents. These grow tents are becoming more and more popular since you can have plants in the vegetation stage in one chamber and then flowering plants on a different light cycle in the other chamber. Mars Hydro also now has inline fans. They have four inch and six inch versions using either a thermostat controller or a speed controller. And then one last thing to mention is that Mars Hydro is now using Samsung LM301H diodes in their FC6500 LED grow light. These are arguably the best diodes on the market today. I will leave a link to their website down in the description section below, and you can use coupon code MrGrowIt for a discount on their products. Okay, now let's get into the topic today, which is using the dimmer and determining what the grow light distance should be from the top of the plants to the fixture. So there's really three steps to determine this. Number one, the first step would be to look at the grow lights par chart. Now these days, all good grow lights do come with a par chart. You can find that on the grow light listing. We're gonna touch a little bit on what par is on this video, but I do have a separate video that gets deeper into par, talking about exactly what par is, and also a couple different ways to measure it, PPF and PPFD. So I won't get too detailed in this video, but on the outro card of this video, I'll link that video. So in case you guys wanna watch that and learn about PPF and PPFD more in detail. But really what PAR is in layman's terms is really just a range of light that the plant uses for photosynthesis. Photosynthetically, active radiation is what it stands for. So on your grow light listing, this should be a PAR chart. It should really be kind of a square and there should be different numbers. And with many of these new grow lights, they're gonna have different charts for different light distances. Back in the day, a lot of companies used to mislead consumers and they used to just put the dead center number and that's it. So you know the strongest point, the dead center of the footprint, what that measurement was, but you wouldn't know any other measurements on the footprint. These days, full part charts are available, again, with any good grow light on the market. So that's the first step, is to look at those PAR charts and get an idea of what the PPFD numbers are for each of the light distances that they list. Next step is to understand the general PAR ranges for plants. Now, it depends on what plant you're growing. Something like leafy greens, lettuce, kale, spinach, they're gonna need a lot less light than some other plants which require high light. For the plant that we all know and love, general ranges are 200 to 400 PPFD for seedlings, clones, and mother plants, 400 to 600 PPFD for plants in the vegetation stage, and 600 to 900 PPFD for plants in the flowering stage. Now, if you're supplementing CO2, you can go higher than those numbers. Again, those are just general ranges. But if you are supplementing CO2 and giving your plants more light, your other conditions have to be dialed in, temperature, humidity, and of course, nutrition. So you've looked at the PAR charts on the grow light listings and you're seeing the different distances there and what the PPFD numbers are at the different distances. And now you're aware of what the plant's requirements are for the different stages of growth in PPFD. And then the last step is to do the math. So once I tell you this step, some of you are gonna be like, uh, oh yeah, why didn't I think of this? And then others will be like, oh yeah, that's common sense. Of course, why wouldn't you do that? Either way, there's a lot of people that don't know about this, so I figured I'd make a video. And then when I get that question about what the light distance should be with the dimmer, I can simply forward people this video. So do the math. For example, if you're looking at the part chart and at the light distance of 12 inches, dead center PPFD is 1000. That's with the dimmer at 100%. Well, if you turn the dimmer down to 50%, What's 50% of 1,000? 500. So a rough estimate, and again, this isn't gonna be perfect. There are gonna be a lot of variables. If you're in a grow tent and you have reflective walls, they could skew the numbers, versus if you're in an open space and you don't have those reflective walls, well, then you're probably gonna get different measurements. Again, this is to give you a general idea of what the PAR output is. So 12 inches, 1,000 PPFD at 100%, turn it down to 50%, 500 PPFD, right? Half of that 1,000. So what if you're at 12 inches, 1,000 PPFD dead center, you turn the dimmer down to 80%, 800 PPFD, right? So 80% of 1,000 
800 ppfd and there may even be some people that comment to this video and say that's not correct if you dim it down to 50 percent it's not going to be 50 percent of the 100 percent value so i did actually put this to the test just to prove it let's take a look at the results right now okay so the first one up is the es 180 led grow light by the green sunshine company at full power it pulls 200 watts from the wall you can see that on my kilowatt meter here and my power meter is showing 485 ppfd so if you divide that by two, what we're looking for is 242.5, let's round up, 243 PPFD is what it should be at 50%. So right now I'm dialing the dimmer down. I'm doing my best guess to estimate where the 50% mark is. I'm also using the kilowatt meter as a guide. Closest I can get to halfway is 98.5 watts. And then looking at the par meter, that's showing 250 ppfd. So that's very close, only about 7 ppfd off. So this example was pretty solid. Let's move on to the next one, the SF2000 LED grow light by Spider Farmer. Full power here, it shows 202 watts. And then my par meter is showing 515 ppfd. So if we dim it down to 50%, we should see about 258 PPFD. You can see the dimmer is set to 50% and it's showing 200 PPFD. So we're a little bit off there. We're about 58 PPFD off. Definitely still within the ballpark. So I wouldn't say it was wildly different by any means. And the 50% was actually showing 72.3 watts. So actually a little bit less than half. And just one last thing I wanted to do was dial it up so it is exactly 50% via watts. So it was 202 watts full power, dimming it down. The closest I could get it was 99.3 watts. And on the dimmer, that actually shows 60%. And the PPFD is about 266. The light is moving. That's why you're seeing the measurement go up and down a little bit. So yeah, this kilowatt meter is actually something that can help dial in that halfway mark. I think I spent around 20 bucks for this meter, so not too bad. It's not gonna be perfect. I don't know how many times I have to say this because I just have a feeling that there are gonna be people in the comment section that say, this isn't perfect, this isn't exact. Right, I'm telling you that right now. It's to give you a general idea of what the PAR output is. Now you could always go out and buy a PAR meter and take measurements that way. This video is really for the folks that don't have the money to spend on a PAR meter. It can be very expensive. I personally have the Apogee MQ500 PAR meter. I think it runs about $525 for that one. It measures from 400 to 700 nanometers, which is your traditional PAR range. You're gonna be able to measure LED grow lights as well as HID grow lights with that PAR meter. I also have the Apogee MQ620, which is an extended range PAR meter. It measures from 340 nanometers up to 1040 nanometers. So it's actually gonna go into UV as well as go up into far red IR. I think this meter was about 575, I believe, $575. So they're pretty expensive. Now there are cheaper PAR meters on the market. Some are more accurate than others. And now there's also apps that you can use that you can actually measure PAR directly from your smartphone. With those as well, some are more accurate than others. I'm actually about to release a Garden Talk podcast episode with Shane from Micro LED, And he talks all about measuring PAR and he talks about some of the alternatives to the Apogee PAR meters. So stay tuned for that episode. When that episode is released, I'll link it down in the description section below and also put it in the outro card as well. So we'll have that PAR video that I spoke about and also have that episode with Shane from Migro next to it. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps some of you that don't have the money to go and buy a PAR meter. You should now be able to make an educated guess on what the grow light distance should be when using the dimmer. That's pretty much it for this video guys. If you enjoyed it please click that thumbs up and I will leave it at that. Until next time, peace.